Hi everybody and welcome to this video. My name is Dave Hiddeman, the application specialist for the steel segment here at Trimble. And today I wanted to kind of a follow-up video uh, to the 2022 new fabrication drawing function. Um, I mentioned how in the US environment, steel roll, uh, we have changed the drawing properties uh, in 2022 to use the view-based drawing settings. So I wanted to give an overview of what that meant, how they work, and the changes that we've made in our localization. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into this. So using slides is not typically something I do in these videos, um, but I thought it might be helpful to show some imagery of 2021 versus 2022 so that people get an idea of, of what things are going to look like now. Um, so again, we're covering the new drawing properties that we're using in localization in the steel roll in the U.S. environment in Tecla Structures 2022. So uh, what we've changed is um, this view-based approach to drawing creation. Um, essentially, what that means is instead of having this sort of top-down drawing property governing the entire sheet, now view properties are the primary control for what the drawings are going to look like. So that's going to include both part appearance and part marks and what they're showing, but also dimensioning rules are now view-based rather than overall drawing-based. Um, Adding to that, where dimensioning rules are defined at the view level, there are also new types of dimensioning rules available. And we haven't used those very much in this steel roll, but they are there, and I'm going to show you a brief example of those. Um, I do want to point out that this isn't exactly a new feature. It's actually been around for a while. It was first introduced in 2015. The earliest example I could find of us talking about it here in the U.S., um, is in uh, at our user meeting, I believe it was Glendale, Arizona, and it was version 21.1. .1. So it has been around for a while, we just hadn't adopted it in our localization for the steel uh, role and for the, the structural steel industry. It is already in use by other roles in the US, so if you were to open, say, a precast role or a concrete and rebar role, you'll probably find that these are already there. Um, we're also going to find that this change is really affecting your fabrication drawings, so your assembly drawings and your single part drawings. GA drawings, not so much, uh, except for when you're cutting sections, you'll see the new view properties. Uh, but really, as a, as a general rule of thumb, GA drawings are pretty much the same that they've always been. It's really the, the shop drawings, right, where you're going to see this difference. So to sort of get some imagery of what we're going to be looking at here in a few minutes, um, your assembly drawing properties in 2021, uh, that's showing there on the left right now. And as you can see, it's just, you know, showing standard properties. Everything's sort of organized here where you got view layouts, dimension properties, mark properties, and object properties. But that's, again, affecting every view on the sheet. Uh, in 2022, when you open your drawing properties, this is what you're going to see. So obviously the dialog box looks very different and you're going to see that the different sort of uh, groups of, of properties are broken down in a tree view on the left. Now this is just your sort of generic drawing stuff. If you were to go to view properties on this drawing, this is where you're going to see sort of the same sort of buttons uh, broken down in a tree view. So here where you have marks, group, part mark, bolt mark, neighbor part mark, uh, over here under the marks group for the drawing, part mark, bolt mark, neighbor part mark. So it's the same sort of concept, okay, just broken down into a tree view and primarily accessed at the view level, not the drawing level. And the same thing for your object properties uh, down here, okay? If we take a look at single part drawings, we'll see the same sort of layout. So there's the old single part drawing dialog box, which looks very much like the assembly uh, drawing uh, dialog box. And then in 2022, we're going to see a new single part drawing properties. And then again, view properties, which are going to control most of the things that you're used to seeing at the drawing level. Okay, so just a quick, you know, we're going to dive deeper into this a little bit in an actual model, but I just wanted to give you kind of a before and after what you what you can expect, right, when you're getting into 2022. 
Also, to avoid uh, confusion between old drawing attributes, you know, the drawing settings that you would load for your, you know, assembly drawings and single part drawings, and that's showing both here, assembly and single part. In 2022, we have changed the name so that there's no confusion that, the, you know, if, if you're running, say, older settings, uh, you're not going to mix those up between the old and the new. So your uh, beam with BOM, channel with BOM, column with BOM, those have all been renamed BOM beam, BOM column, BOM channel, and so on. So they're, they're doing the same thing, one part per sheet, uh, typically 11 by 17. They're just named a little bit differently. And then where we used to have the US beam, US column, uh, or US plate in the case of like single parts, now we're calling it multi, multi beam, multi channel, multi column, and then multi plate, multi bent plate. So again, sort of the same idea, they're meant to go on a, a multi drawing or a gather sheet. We're just naming them differently to avoid that sort of overlap or confusion between old and new settings, okay? So this is what you can expect to see in 2022. Um, when you go to actually create views or edit views, in 2021, the list of out-of-the-box settings for, for views was really only accessed when you were cutting sections or you were creating blow-up details. And you can see an example of those. So we have AB blow-up, AB projection, and sect cut and blow-up, right? Um, so in 2022, because everything is now view-based, you're going to see a much longer list. You're going to see the, the old anchor bolt blow up and you're going to see the old sect cut uh, but you're also going to see these face and face column and face stare that's because these views are not just um, going to be accessed or these view attributes are not just going to be accessed for section cuts and detail views but also for the fabrication drawing main view so it's a much larger list of view properties because they're sort of shared right across all drawing types um, you're also going to see the same view attributes in GA drawings, and they, they're going to work the same way on the GA drawings, with uh, a minor exception, which I will touch on. That's why I have a little asterisk there. I will touch on it's, it's mostly going to be the same thing in a GA drawing view. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump into Tecla. Let's actually take a look at what I'm talking about um, and, and hopefully explain a little bit better how these things are working. So here I've got a... a pretty basic, simple little model with a couple of examples. Um, again, I just wanted to give you just a brief overview, not a super deep dive into these drawing properties, but just to help you understand what you're looking at. Um, so when I go to, let's say, create a column drawing, um, when I go to load column properties, that works the same way. I would go to my drawing properties and choose assembly drawing. From the drop down menu, I can find the drawing setting I want to use. In this case, I'll use BOM column. You'll notice as soon as I click on this, it actually loads the properties automatically. So there's no more load button here. As soon as I select, they're just automatically loaded. Okay, so that's one less click, which is nice. Um, the overall drawing properties are going to uh, still be here. Titles, layout. So layout's going to be your sheet size and the uh, the title blocks and the, the um, BOMs are going to be included, uh, what scales to use, right? So that's not really any different. It's just uh, sort of, you know, laid out different here. Uh, the view creation is the really big difference, and I'll come back to this in a second, but we've got section view properties, detail view properties, which are basically what letter or number to start at, and then the drawing level user defined attributes. So those are all very similar to what you're used to seeing in the drawing properties in older versions of Tecla. The view creation, however, again, is the, the big change. Now, in older versions of Tecla, uh, when you would go to, into the drawing properties and you would look at the views, you would have every view type listed here. In 2022, you don't have to do that. You can only, or if you want, you can only include the views that you actually think you're going to need. So in this case, for a column, we have this set up using a top, front, section view set to auto, and end view set to on, okay? And for each view, we have a separate bit of view properties. So you can have view properties specific to a front view, specific to a top view, and specific to a section view. It's no longer just these are the rules for the entire sheet and all the views on it, okay? One of the other kind of neat things about this beyond the fact that I can control each view independently is I can actually add 
the same view multiple times. So I can have a front view using the face column properties. I can have another front view enabled with standard, another front view enabled with 3D, and another front view with something else. So if you have, just as an example, a very complex assembly, you could have multiple views of the same perspective turned on and then maybe different sets of dimensions applied to it or different part marks enabled or, or disabled. Um, so it gives you just a lot more power. Of course, you can always make those views manually, but if you can automate it, you're getting a lot more power and a lot more customization in that initial drawing creation than you've ever been able to do before. So I'm going to go ahead and take these out. I didn't actually want to use them. Let me take those out there. So we've got top view, front view, and section views. Um, if we wanted to look at the actual view properties of what's happening here, I can go to like front view, click on view properties, and this is going to open up the, the properties that are currently applied to that view. And then you can see it's loading in the face column setting. By the way, if I wanted to load something else here, again, there's no load button. So I can simply click on like face and it's going to change the properties. And if I go down to face stare, that's going to give me a different set of properties. You know, it's not that I can see in this particular tab, um, but there's no load button, okay? So if I go to the face column, again, this is the sort of thing that we used to control at the drawing level. So I can control in this view, which part marks are turned on and what they should say. Um, I can also go down to the objects section and I can dictate what they should look like for different parts and different bolts and things like that. Okay, so it's it's just moving it from the drawing level to the view level. Um, the one big thing, again, is that dimensioning is now controlled at the view level. So if you were to ever go to the dimensioning section in a view property, you're going to see something like this. Now this is a pretty simple rule. The current setting is saying use the current assembly or look at the current assembly on the sheet and use this dimensioning type called integrated. If you see the term integrated dimensions, all that means is the old or the standard dimensioning rules and dimensioning style. Okay, so if I were to click on this line item and hit edit rule, you'll see that it's the same sort of dimensioning rules, dimensioning properties that we've always used in our drawings. So that's all integrated means, is, is it's using the traditional dimensioning properties in this sheet. Now, I mentioned how there are new types of dimensioning rules. So if I were to click this dropdown, I'm not going to be using these right now, but just to show you that there's not just integrated, you know, the classic, if you want to call it that, dimensioning, but there's also overall dimension rules, shape dimension rules, whole dimension rules, filter dimension rules. So again, in theory, you could create multiple dimensioning rules on a view, filtering for certain objects, calling out shape dimensions, calling out secondary part dimensions in separate rules so that you can really get nitty gritty and define exactly what is going to be called out and how on a sheet. Now again, we're keeping this pretty standard for this first round of you know uh, moving everything over to the new properties using this integrated, but feel free to go ahead and try some of these out and, and see what kind of customization you can get. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and we're just going to close this and I'm going to say apply and we're going to you know, create a drawing just the same way that uh, I showed in that previous video where we can select an assembly and then hit the create fabrication drawing button. Uh, that's going to create a sheet and put it in my document manager. So if I go ahead and open this up. So first off, I want to point out how the drawing should look like our drawings have always looked. You know, we've got our views created, dimensions created, section cuts, end views in the case of this column. Um, now, one thing we were able to do and we decided to try out was we turned on welds in the section property. So if I double click in the background, bring up the, the uh, assembly drawing properties with my view creation here. So we've got one setting for the main views, what we're calling face, and then a different set of properties for our section views. So what we did was we turned on welds because that's actually something we've gotten questions about over the years is why aren't you showing welds? And you know, to be honest, it's because of that sort of Chia Pet effect if you get too many of them turned on uh, in, in the views. So we decided to try turning them on in just the section views, and, and you can go ahead and turn those off if you like. Um, but I kind of like the idea that you're getting them in here now by default. Now that does require that you actually model in your welds correctly. And then once you get them in here, you can go ahead and select, right click, and hit the merge command to join them together. So you can do a little bit of touch up and editing 
to get them to look the way you want and then just delete the ones that you don't need. Again, you may choose that you wanna just go ahead and turn that off, that's totally up to you, but we're trying it uh, in this new 2022 localization. Now another quick thing that I wanna point out is in the drawings, you do have this recreate option, and sometimes a change will trigger that automatically if it's a big change, but you can also choose that after any change that you're making here. So if I go and uh, like, let's say I wanna turn off my top view, I may wanna trigger a recreation ma manually just so I'm getting sort of the best results out of this. So I'll go ahead and say modify, say yes, and it's gonna recreate the sheet for me with those new settings. Now previously in older versions of Tecla, I would have to you know, literally close out of the drawing and recreate through the right click menu in the document manager. So this allows me to just do it on the fly without having to close out of the sheet um, and, and do it you know, the old fashioned way. So I can come back here, turn this back on. That is automatically triggering a recreate this time. So we'll say modify, say yes, and allow it to go ahead and, and recreate the sheet there for us, okay? So pretty neat stuff, I think. Um, okay, so let's jump out of here, let's jump back, and I wanna show you some other stuff. I wanna give you a couple of examples of where we're using this new dimension rules and these new dimension styles to give you better out of the box uh, drawing setups and drawing dimensions. So if I go here to my drawing properties, I'm going to make a, uh, a Z pan stair drawing. So I'll say apply and let's go ahead and make this sheet. And then I'm going to load the regular stairs. We've actually split this up in 2022. We'll say apply and I'll grab this uh, grading tread stair and we'll create the fabrication drawing on that. Okay, so now that those drawings have been created, let me go ahead and open this up. Um, first off, you'll see that the Z pan stair does have some basic dimensions to it. In older versions, you may find that either, um, you know, there are some basic dimensions, but maybe they're not as accurate or they're not really dimensioning to what you would want them to be dimensioned to. We have this turned on where it's giving dimensions to the secondary parts. Let me go ahead and show you the rules here for this front view. So there's this face stair Z pan. If I open up the view properties, it's using a dimensioning rule for filter dimensions. And if I go ahead and take a look at that, let me click edit rule. It's gonna open up this new dimensioning rule property dialog box. So what's happening, this is a filter type dimension. And again, we can change uh, the type of dimensioning rule, but this is a filter type dimension looking for a filter called stair secondary parts. So it's finding any plates that have been welded to it. It's finding the, um, uh, the, the secondary stringer parts, like the channel up here at the top. But the stair secondary parts is excluding the treads, okay? Because we have different ways to dimensioning uh, the treads. In this case, I'm saying I want those dimensions above and to the right of the stair. I could move them to the left, depending on the orientation of the stair in this drawing. And then the direction and whether or not I want these dimensions to close. Okay, and there are some more advanced things that we can get into. I, this isn't meant to be an overall deep dive into these dimensioning rules. I'm just showing an example of what we've created out of the box. Okay, so we have this showing um, just basically the main overall secondary parts, if I can call it that, uh, showing like the plates that have been welded in those secondary stringer pieces. We don't have treads turned on in this particular setting because in the US environment, we still have the Z pan dimensioning macro that can automatically add your, your nosing dimensions and things like that. So it's meant to be used with this. Now, if I go to the next sheet and we look at the grading tread stair, we can see that we're getting those secondary part dimensions, but we're also getting a separate line of tread dimensions. So we're getting our rise and we're getting our run. You'll still have to create the running dimensions um, you know, along the slope using whatever methods you have now, but this is gonna get you that little bit closer, a little bit less cleanup, a little bit less manual work to get those dimensions in. Now, if we were to look at this rule, let me double click in the background again. We'll go to the view creation for the front view. We're using this face stair front. So I'm gonna open this up 
and if I go to the dimensioning, you can see there are two sets of filter dimensions. There's one for filter dimensions parts, which is basically what we have on the Z-Pan as well, but there's also a tread dimension rule. And again, if I take a look at this, I can hit edit rule. Um, it is using a filter, but a different filter called treads. And then again, uh, locating it on the top side and to the right in this particular view. And again, if the stair orientation was different, I may want to switch this over to the left side and uncheck the right side, but that really depends on your orientation, okay? So this is just a, a brief example of what you could be creating or what could be customized. And this is just something we're including out of the box in Tecla Structures 2022 localization for the steel environment in the US. Okay. So the one last thing I want to show you before I wrap this video up is GA drawings. Uh, so let me go ahead and open up a quick plan view and we'll make a quick plan sheet. I understand there's not a whole lot going on here. Um, so I've already got plan loaded in here. Notice that the, the uh, dialog box for GA drawings still looks the same as it always has. So not a whole lot has changed here. Okay. So I'll say apply. We'll go ahead and we'll create this sheet. And again, we'll, we should see that the drawings look pretty much the way they always have. You know, dimensions created between the grid lines. Um, we've got our part marks enabled and things like that. Again, if I double click in the background, I'm getting the old drawing dialog. Nothing changed, nothing unique here. However, if I were to double click on the main view, you'll see that the view is using this view dialog box that is new for 2022. Okay, and that means as well, if I were to do something like cut a section, I can come in here and go to the views, double click on section view. Um, when I hit the drop down menu, it's going to give me all of those uh, view options that we were talking about earlier, including the assembly drawing view properties here. But I'm going to activate, say, sect cut, which has always been there, and we'll say apply. And I'm going to go ahead and cut a view here on the sheet set our range, and then create that view. Okay, so, so nothing really different there as far as that goes. Um, one thing I do want to point out though, so I mentioned how these are the, uh, the same view properties that you can load from an assembly drawing. So one of the assembly drawing section or, or uh, view properties is called section. So if I load that, you'll notice that there's no dimensioning group here. If I go to one of those like face, which is used on beam drawings, there's no dimensioning group. If I go to face column, which we did look at, there's no dimensioning group. So the automatic dimensioning that happens on an assembly drawing or a single part drawing is not going to happen here on a plan sheet, okay? It's just a different set of rules. It's a different way of doing things. It will use all of the other rules as far as marks and appearance and things like that, um, but it's just not going to like dimension like a single part drawing or an assembly drawing would, okay? So just something to be aware of when getting into this, but otherwise the overall drawing properties are going to look the same as they always have, okay? So I'm going to wrap this up shortly, but I do want to just touch on a few things that I'm sure are going through people's minds. Um, how do I enable or disable this functionality? Um, so there is an advanced option, uh, XS Use Old Drawing Creation Settings, okay? And that has been around, remember I said that this was first announced in 2015, so it has been around for a while. Um, in the older, versions of Tecla 2021 and older, we have this set to true. That way it's going to use the old dialog boxes, right? Um, in 2022 and newer, false is the default setting so that we're now using these new dialog boxes. That means if you're using an older version of Tecla structures from 21.1 to 2021, and you wanted to try this, you could change this advanced option to false, and then you could see you know, how these uh, settings work in your current version that you have. Or if you're using Tecla structures 2022 and you wanna stick with the old dialogues, you can just simply change this option to true. Um, in those older versions, if you open up any model that you've worked in in 2021 or older, and go into the model folder, open the options any file in notepad or, or wordpad or something like that, you'll see that setting in there, excess use old drawing creation settings equals true. 
Um, just note that if you decide to try this in an older version, in an existing model, you'll have to close the model, make this change, and then reopen the model. Okay, You can't change this file while the model is open. It'll actually overwrite your change and you'll lose it. If you want to make this a permanent change in those, well really in either the older or the newer versions, the best bet is to put this line in your user any. If you're not familiar with your user any, I suggest you check out the tips and tricks video on the directory browser. Um, or you can just you know do a search through Windows to find your user.ini file and you can add this line with whatever option you choose. Quick note for those who are starting to use 2022 and you're not ready to make the change to these new dialogues, you want to use the old dialogues in your old settings. If you change this to true, you're going to have to find either copying or ask us to provide you with those older you know beam with BOM drawing settings the new names the new save names BOM dash beam are not compatible with the old dialog boxes okay so if you decide to set this to true in 2022 you're gonna need to get those drawing settings from either an older version of Tecla or reach out to the help desk and we should be able to provide you with those <clears throat> If you're using an older version of Tecla and you want to try these settings, you know, you go ahead and you change that setting to false, you open it up, you get the new dialog. What's going to happen with those old drawing settings or any existing settings that you've customized is Tecla will attempt to upgrade those to the new dialog box. So what's going to happen is it's going to take the name of the drawing property and it's going to save that as a view property. So here in this example, you can see new beam with BOM, new beam with BOM2, okay? So that's that conversion happening from drawing level property to view level property. And then you can go in and clean those up and, you know, adjust whatever you need to adjust. Because we're going from drawing level to view level, you may see some duplicates because, you know, we're assigning the same view properties to multiple views. And again, you can clean those up, you can delete the ones you don't want, rename them if you need to, but just something uh, to be aware of if you decide to try these settings in an older version of Tecla or using existing custom settings in Tecla Structures 2022. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap this up now. I understand this is kind of a longer video than usual, but I wanted to try to give as much detail as I could without going too deep. Um, again, this is new for Tecla Structures 2022 in the steel localization uh, in the U.S. environment. So let us know how you feel about this change, if there's something you want us to adjust or any suggestions about how we could improve this. Um, and as always, we thank you for sitting with us for this video and hope you enjoy these new changes in Tecla Structures 2022.